gentlemen, welcome to the most must hear podcast online. Welcome to the Two Podcast. This is our first episode, and we really appreciate those of you that actually give a shit and are tuning in to give us a try. My name is BJ, and I'm here with the very, very sexy and the legendary Hardlos. Uh, today we're going to be going over some wrestling bits and some comic books and whatnot, and uh, let's just let's just dive right into it rather than just naming off all the shit that we have planned. Um, Seth Rollins is kind of being a little bitch online. At least I feel like he's being a little asshole. How do you feel about that? He's been a real cunt. Yeah. Like, honestly, I'm a big fucking fan of what he does. He's a great wrestler, but for some reason he's just showing everybody, like, I'm the best and I have all this money, so suck my dick. And I'm like, what? Right. And, okay, so here's the thing. Of course there's there's WWE loyalists out there, and I've told you before in private, but we're here online, so I don't understand how anybody can be a WWE loyalist when... Obviously, the dude running WWE doesn't give a shit about the fans. So how can you back something up? There are people defending um, Seth Rollins and how he's kind of lashing out and being a being a dick, like you know, just targeting Will Ospreay, talking about how much money he makes. He legit thinks WWE is the absolute best wrestling promotion in the world, um, and he backs that up by saying they're the best because of how many shows they do per year. No, I don't really think he truly believes that shit, but he's a man who's loyal. I feel like he's just really loyal to what, and he's very grateful to what he has, and WWE has provided that to him, but it's too far. He's speaking to a mass of people who know that it's like, it's bullshit. You're, you, you are one of the best, but you're not in the best company. Your product isn't putting out great product. People don't care about watching all these stupid storylines. And, yeah, Vince doesn't care about anything but just making money. And the WWE is making so much money now, more than before, which I don't understand how, when the product is so bad. When when was the last time you've watched? When was the last time you've sat through a three-hour episode of Monday Night Raw? Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know, maybe like three months ago? It's, it's, been, it's been a it's good been while. Because even yeah. then, I, I watch it on replay. I don't watch it live. So I have the ability to fast-forward, which is amazing. Right. But, yeah, it's been a long time, man. I know you stopped watching before I stopped watching. I would still tune in um, after work to see what was going on. And I would, you know, talk to you about it. Going, oh, you know, I don't fucking know. I'm not watching it. You know? And uh, yeah. and then it got to the point where it was so big. Because, like, I, when, when I'm really, really into something, um, I tend to back it up and I tend to support it, you know? But it, it even got to the point where I didn't... I don't even fucking want to watch this shit anymore. I haven't watched... Monday Night Raw. I haven't watched SmackDown, and it's probably going on two months now. And um, it's not getting any better no. from what I've seen, from what I've heard, from the reviews I've I've both read and listened to. So I'm thinking uh, one of the one of the several reasons why he's backing up the company is because he doesn't understand what it's like to Seth Rollins has been treated fucking. He's been protected since his NXT days. Oh yeah, he was the first NXT champion. He was the architect of the shield. As soon as the shield broke up, he was the one that was by Triple H's side. Um, he's been WWE champion. Inter- he won Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania, right? He cashed in on Brock Lesnar and Roman Reigns and won the WWE title. All right, we all at- know how great and accomplished he is. So bottom line is it's easy for him to defend something where he hasn't really been on the shit end of it. Right. Like so, okay. his best homie... Dean Ambrose, you know, Mr. Moxley now, he was on the opposite end of it. Like, they, they put some trust in him, they tried to do something with him, but they always fed him the stupid comedy shit that we already know because of the Jericho podcast. But Seth, he's, like you said, he's been protected. He's always been made the man. He's never had to do these stupid, idiotic situations. So I could see why he lives in a little protected bubble when he doesn't maybe understand why other people are upset about it. Right, yeah. Um, and that, I mean, that, that's kind of the hard part, isn't it? Because you have one person who's been treated so well, so of course he's going to protect the product. But do you think, going beyond that, do you think maybe he's just pulling a a Hogan and just kissing Vince's fucking ass to keep his spot? Well, if he is, he also has to put out, like, some sex tapes where he's racist and stuff. God, (laughs) fuck. (laughs) But uh, I, I honestly, I think he just, he sees his spot in the company as a good thing. Right. And he doesn't want to ruin it. So why rock the boat? So I think he's just being the guy who's defending the company. Yeah. Sustain his good graces for as long as he can. 
So aside from defending the company, how do you feel? Because I think this is a real, a real bitch move. Um, bragging about how much money he makes, comparing it to you know Will Ospreay and talking about how he has a bigger bank account. Well, I've covered this already. He's being a cunt about it. Like the only th- this all started by just Seth saying like, "Oh, like I'm the shit. My company's the shit," and Will Ospreay's like calling him out for it. Right. And when Osprey's making good points, suddenly you got to be the asshole and be like, well, I make more money than you. Like, that's just some bitch shit. Like, this is not what it was about. Shut your mouth. And even even more so about him being a little asshole is Will Osprey wasn't disrespectful in any way when he when he responded to the tweet because Seth just said, you know, pretty much I'm the only one named somebody else. And Will Osprey was like, dude, I'm right here. You know, like I'm talent, like I have just as much talent, you know, and that was pretty much it. And Seth decided to take it to the next level and just be, you know, just be a little asshole. So um, moving on to the next thing, I think we both agree that Seth is is wrong in this situation. Um, Becky Lynch isn't so manly anymore, man. Uh, you do, know, do you agree with me on that? I would try to agree with you, but then I'd have to actually sit there and watch the product, <laughs> which I just don't anymore. I just look up results. I see how I'm doing on my fantasy league. And that's pretty much how I catch up with. WWE. How are you doing on your on your? I'm fantasy. doing fantastic because <laughs> I gave all my players, my top guys, to my friends. Oh, my here's mind. another thing. Um, the product is so bad, right? Once upon a time, we the only reason we were watching Raw and SmackDown was because we were excited to see <clears throat> how our fantasy league was going to do. But now it's gotten to the point where we don't even give a fuck about our fantasy league. No, no. I mean, I keep up with the points just to, just to watch and see how we're doing. But that's it. I don't even watch the product no more. I don't fucking care if i hear there's a good match i'll tune in and watch some smackdown or raw but other than that i fast forward through all that garbage yeah as far as becky lynch though she is not the man like she's lost a lot of steam yeah dude like she was kicking ass for so long and they dragged it out with ronda for so long that by the time it got to mania people just didn't care as much and ever since then it's just dwindled down she's not she's a shell of her former self which is sad one i want to continue to talk about becky but one just one quick thing uh, yes or no question. Do you feel like WWE has not really given a shit about the women's division ever since Ronda Rousey left? I don't even think they've really given a shit about the division itself. They just cared about Ronda Rousey. And that is it. The tag team division is a joke, which, I mean, it's on par with the men's division as well. But I was hoping for something way more. You know, they have they don't have as many ladies on the on the roster. This is a chance for them to really show what they got right. because they only have, like, one championship per show. And it's just really sad to see that this stuff is not planned out the way we, or panned out the way we wanted it to. Exactly. Uh, going back to Becky Lynch, um, she, you know, you're right that she was she was consistently kicking ass nonstop. She was cutting good promos. She was calling people out. She was cutting the authority out. You know, you had that one great episode where she was just bleeding from the face after Nia decided she was gonna give her a you know a stiff punch to the fucking face. But now, from what I've seen. Um, and clips here and there because I, I do once in a while I'll, I'll look up some clips and she's just not a badass anymore and another this thing that no. they're doing the, the romance angle that they're doing with her and Seth is uh, re- it's really damaging that I don't that. care it's really damaging <laughs> I don't that. care I know Jesus. I know man it, they're I don't give a shit about it either. If I want to know about their their love life or their relationship, maybe I'll catch something on Twitter. But it it has nothing to do. I want to tune in to watch great wrestling and great storylines. And they can't even come up with great storylines. They try to bring stuff in that's from the reality just to try to get our attention. It's like Moxley saying Vince has to get his hands on absolutely everything. Yes, yeah, it's, it's just trash. I don't care. I can see it in Becky. She looks like she doesn't want even to do this. She looks really, really uncomfortable. Yeah, I mean, it's her personal life. I don't think she wants to do it. I don't. Seth, I think, is just being the, the good soldier and soldiering on and doing what Vince wants. But it's it's not something I care about. Right. And it seems like, because um, there, there are some of these superstars that aren't so private and they post a lot about their social lives on social media and even kind of go in depth in the interviews. But Becky has always kind of been more private about her personal life and whatnot. She'll go into detail if, if she's asked in an interview. So it just kind of seems like she's out of her comfort zone. Which is why they look so fucking awkward. What, was it Stomping Grounds? Where where she? Yeah, it, she yeah. took she took like twenty years to come out and save her fucking <laughs> boyfriend for one. Yeah. And um, oh, she said she tweeted something. This was funny. It was somewhere along the lines of like you know you can you can slap you can slap Seth or punch him or whatever, but the second you give him a low blow, you know it's she, so it's kind of like stay away from my my boy's dick. I need that oh, shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She's like, I need that dick. 
All right. The old so, Seth sausage. You fucked up. Oh, that thing's a Pringles can too. Um, so let's. Uh, oh my god. Okay. All right. Ne- next, just a little quick thing. Um, uh, Hardlose here has recently got into what's me in in the in the comic books. Yeah. And um, something I've been into for a good while, but, but he's just gotten into it. I'm really, I'm really happy for you, man. I'm really excited. I'm proud of you. It makes me it makes me happy. But uh. Yeah. No, thank you. Like it, it really legit makes me happy reading a lot of these stories because like. As we complain about WWE and their storytelling, and as I watch some things on Netflix, I'm like, this is garbage. There's just a lot of good stuff that's in these comics that it's viewed upon as just something for a child, but like it's really good storytelling being told, which is way more entertaining than a lot of the stuff out there. And they're characters that you're already familiar with, so you go in with like kind of an attachment to them already. Yeah, definitely. You don't have to have like uh, an estab- something built to get you to get into it. But um, what are what are some of the favorite what are some of your favorite things that you're reading right now? Uh, Justice League is just freaking amazing. I think it's just showing me all these aspects and characteristics of all these people I already know about that I've not even been shown in a light in the movies or a lot of the cartoons and stuff. So it's real cool. Justice League, Avengers. I started reading Captain America. That's interesting. Um, the whole Doomsday Watchmen stuff is insane to see how that ties in with the DC universe and how pretty much Manhattan probably created a whole universe. See, and I think it's cool with the whole doomsday clock thing because I've been reading comics since I was, you know, a little guy, but I stopped reading for a while and there's things that I haven't read and I think it's cool with the whole doomsday clock. Like, you were informing me of shit that I didn't even know about. Like, you were the one that was telling me that Dr. Manhattan was pretty much, was it was responsible for the new 52 yeah. or the reset of the new 52 or something like that. I think he created the new 52 essentially. That's what I read. I'm not sure. Right. But I'm reading it right now and I'll, you know, I'll let you know later for sure, but it's it's just real interesting. Is there anything that you're um, excited for that's going to be coming out soon? Any any titles? Uh, definitely Batman one, the the last night on earth. That one's very interesting. I bought one and I was like, I need to read the next one, but it sucks that it takes forever for the next one to come out. So I'm looking forward to that. Can't really think of anything else on top of my head. But I do thank you very much for um, just throwing me down this avenue that's of comics. I love it. It's good shit and. Uh, it's good shit. It's good <laughs> shit. But, uh, yeah, I can't believe I'm spending so much fucking money on it, but it's, uh, it's money well spent. Yeah, you know, um, I've, I've gotten a lot of shit growing up for um, being in the comic books and reading comics. There was a time when I stopped uh, reading and buying because I kind of just got tired of people talking shit, either making fun of me or legit getting beat up in fucking middle school. But just got to the point where I'm like, you know what? I don't give a shit anymore. This stuff is fucking awesome. It helps me with things that I'm dealing with in my personal life. And it's like, you get lost in these stories. Uh, you see what these characters are going through and how they prevail, I guess you could say. Like, um, my favorite superhero is Supergirl um, for a lot of reasons. And I'm currently reading the uh, current Supergirl run. And I'm going back and reading previous issues, things that I've missed out uh, th- you know, throughout the years. And it's all really good, man. It's um, it's really good. It's distracting. It puts you in a better place. And you know, um, I'm really glad that you're uh, that you're into it. Cause I, I think I've I've mentioned what a few years ago I tried to get you to go with. Uh, I tried to like set up a little trip with friends to go down to the comic book store, Four Colors and Rancho. And um, I don't think you like you weren't able to make it or something. And I was pretty bummed out. And the, the trip sucked because. The people I went with, like, you know, weren't really into it. And one of the guys was just a fucking asshole the whole time. That sounds like me. Um, Yeah, but you're, like, a lovable asshole. That's true. So um, this guy, like, okay, so we talk about comics, we talk about characters, we have a good time, right? This dude, me and, you know, my homie were talking about, you know, oh, who do you think would win in a fight? Not Batman or Iron Man, but... Tony Stark versus Bruce Wayne and obviously it's Bruce Wayne or whatever we're having a good time with it and you know we asked this dude like oh what do you think and his answer was literally I don't fucking care and he (laughs) said it yeah he said it just like that and we were just kind of like okay well fuck you dude you know you're gonna be a little bitch about it but uh yeah at that point it's like why even go why even go right exactly so no miserable fuck (laughs) no I'm really glad you're into it and um it's uh it's it's funny and exciting because like every time you order something it's like oh that, that that must be how i used to be when i was 
consistently ordering shit online and it arrives and you're just like excited that it shows up, you know? Yeah. Um, it would have been cool to go, but I don't remember why I didn't. I don't know. Maybe I didn't want to be around that miserable fuck. Maybe that was it. <laughs> but um, I'm glad that pretty much every every time we get paid, we got trips to the to that comic store now, comic book store. Yes, um, that place is very very awesome. So we're uh, gonna get into our main topic here, and that's what what this whole episode is gonna be about, and that is a review of. All Elite Wrestling's Fighter Fest. This was a free show that was streaming on Bleacher Report yesterday, which was Saturday the 28th, right? I'm um, going to go with the 29th. 29th, yeah. Yeah, yeah Hardless is smarter than I am, so yeah. that's why I asked him to help me out with this. you damn right, you dumb son of a bitch. So uh, the the pre-show was called The Buy-In, and it was, it was a triple threat tag match with Private Party, SCU, and The Best Friends. Um, this was my first time seeing Private Party. I've, I've seen Sam SCU. I fucking love SCU. I'm a I'm a, also a fan of Best Friends. Been watching them in Ring of Honor for a good minute. But it was my first time seeing Private Party, and holy fuck, dude, these guys were like so talented. Yeah, I mean, one of them looks really scrawny, and I'm just like, oh, this guy looks just like a kid who just barely learned how to wrestle. But I was actually very impressed. He kind of looks like a turbo cheeseburger. <laughs> Cheeseburger ate a cheeseburger, and that's just a little bigger. But no, man, he didn't. Looking at the guy, I wasn't impressed. But seeing those two do what they did in the ring, it I was definitely made me a fan. I was definitely look forward to seeing what these guys can do from the future. Yeah, I agree, man. Um, the the match was really good. There was a lot of action. Um, there were some some good hot tags, and it's another perfect example of how great tag team wrestling can be. And you know, it also just puts to shame what WWE is doing and how they neglect tag team wrestling because AEW has kind of said that they want to spotlight tag team wrestling, you know, especially because you've got, you know, the Young Bucks as part of the uh, the creative system or whatever you want to call it. But I thought the I thought that triple threat tag match was really good. Um, yeah, it was definitely a good way to start it off. A lot better than the last pay-per-view start-off match, which was like Sammy Guevara and... Uh, Kip Sabian guy was not impressed with that and I was good to see that they actually put a really good sh- first showing for this free pay-per-view with the pre-show right yeah I definitely agree um, and there was a few things that we both noticed while we were watching it um, it's kind of like a, just a couple negatives about the show was they're having a lot of production issues which is fine because they're just getting started it was their second show yeah but things that I noticed was ti- like timing was off a lot. You know, like they would do something like when they t- when you know the lights went out in the venue and you had like Jesus, that's well, like the, the Ministry of Darkness and Luchador masks show up. But it took <sighs> fucking forever for that to happen. You know, it takes a long time. Like I swear they couldn't just wait under the ring or some shit. It took too fucking long. The sound quality was off. Like I can hear the announcers really loud. I could barely hear the music. It's not directly being fed into the sound of what's coming out of your TV. Right. So you're just hearing like a microphone in an arena. This just doesn't sound as cool because when I'm watching WWE, even though the product is bad, like when you hear someone's music that's clear as day and it's your favorite wrestler, you're like, oh, hell yeah. Like, that shit hits, yeah. Yeah, hearing that glass break when Stone Cold was there, it just made it worthwhile. And if I could barely hear it, I could definitely feel that it would be a different atmosphere. It, it would just, it would flow a lot better. Um, yeah. It would, it would just make it, you know, they're, they're going to have flaws that they have to tweak. You know, again, it's their second show. So cutting them some slack, but at the same time, it's kind of like if you're going to go big, um, you kind of need to work all the kinks out before yeah. you start doing yeah, this they had time it yeah was, it exactly. wasn't like a next week that they had a show they had time to work on this stuff and it's it looks like it's exactly the same sound production as the first event right yeah uh the camera work was better definitely for sure the camera work was was definitely better i, I don't know if because they have um like the two tunnels yeah. that, that lead out to the one ramp that was kind of an issue with uh with bret hart definitely <laughs> God, Bret Hart. Um, <laughs> uh, with Double or Nothing, it seemed like Bret Hart didn't know where he was going. No, he didn't. And, and supposedly uh, he fell, I He guess? fell, yeah. He went straight forward, didn't go through a tunnel. He fell down. I don't know. He, he probably gonna... blamed Seth Rollins for that. Um, well, um, it's probably Seth Rollins' knee, if anything. 
But <laughs> yeah, he fell straight to the ground. He's he's just old, I guess. I don't know what the hell happened. I was fucked the, up. The, the camera work was better because in Double or Nothing, it was like the camera guy didn't know what tunnel a wrestler was going to come out of. Yeah, they, they weren't um, told, so you can tell. This time, they weren't directly in front of the tunnels, pointing at just one. They were, you know, the camera was pointed right down the middle to where you could see both, and then, you know, you could see which one they were going to come out of. But going back to the sound, I don't really care for this this dual librarian gimmick. Um, <laughs> I don't give two shits. Okay, first of all, it was funny the first time. Right. Like, okay, that was cool. I, I can maybe get behind this, but they just did the same shit in a live audience like out in the ring and all they do is shush each other i don't give two shits about this well and that's the thing about the sound too is when you have <laughs> when you're having sound issues yeah and you're having somebody shush into a mic and that shit's peaking it does, it's 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 fucking irritating true it's it uh so that was just and it kind of put me like because it was leva bates versus ally you know and ally's really talented leva bates is pretty decent it just kind of put me in the mood where i was like i don't fucking care about this match now just because I don't know, like a bad gimmick or something. I don't want to be that guy, but no, you know, because I mean, some people can have bad gimmicks but do really good with their matches and whatnot. But um, their I, match was okay. Ali started off really shitty, and then yeah. she definitely picked up because I've no, I've seen what she can do in Impact, and she could definitely do a lot better than what I, than what they showed in this pay per view. But as like you said, I just I wasn't invested in this match. I I wasn't very impressed. And what did impress me is these women from the Orient that Kenny Omega brought in. You can tell that these women go hard and they, they're very professional in what they do. And it really makes a lot of these other, especially American or North American wrestling women, just not up to par. And you can definitely tell the difference. So these girls might struggle a little bit on this program and not be the star that they're going to put the belt on if they're not able to keep up with a lot of these other women. Are you referring to the two... I'm not going to even attempt to say their names because I'll fuck it up, but the two um, Asian chicks that took on, was well, it Nyla? Yeah, Nyla Rose, Rio, and Sakazaki. Those two girls did great, but there's even more. They're so good. Yeah, they're great. And even, there's even more great ones that they showed at the first pay-per-view yeah. in Double or Nothing. And watching that match later on the show, I was just like, oh, thank God. This is way better than what we saw in the, on the, the buy-in. Right. But, um, it could be a positive though because you know um, obviously like Japanese wrestlers and and I'll, actually a lot of wrestlers in other countries kind of take it more serious yeah. than than American wrestlers so it, it could cause you know um, the women wrestlers from you know the states I guess to pick up their game and I hope so you know go yeah and go harder because you don't you don't want like a Eva Marie versus Oscar no situation. God, no. And that's, um, that's the problem with WWE. Like, they bring in some of these people, like Asuka, Io Shirai, and all these great wrestlers, and they put, pit them against these people who are just barely developing as a pro wrestler. Right. And it's, it's a sad product to watch. It's sad to see them, like, dumb down their wrestling skills. And I really hope that's not a trend that happens in AEW. Speaking of that, I just want to throw it out there because it's so ridiculous. Uh, speaking of dumbing down, Becky Lynch versus Lacey Evans. <laughs> I don't want to talk, talk about dumbing down. <laughs> I don't want to talk about it. Um, <laughs> that was, match was horrible. Was CEO versus Nakazawa necessary? No, God, no. I didn't. Okay, so I didn't keep up with like the road to Fighter Fest, right? But I'm kind of, I'm kind of glad I didn't because that was probably part of the road to it because I had no idea it was even going to happen. There must have been some mention of it before, and I don't, I don't think it had to happen at all. I think Nakazawa was going to be. A star, I think he's gonna be. He's funny. Yeah. But the CEO match was just bad. Just it, yeah. It, um, he was either no selling, and when he was selling, it was really, really bad. No. Yeah. Um, his punches and kicks look like. I mean, a toddler could hit harder than that. <laughs> it was bad. I don't care. And I, I understand this is the buy-in. You don't got to put your best foot forward. But when you're gonna open the match with SCU, best friends, and private party. And then you're going to throw this garbage at me. I don't want to see that. There's yeah. already garbage like that in WWE, and I, I, there's no need for it here. So what do you think? Because I thought it was it was ridiculous. And I kind of, if, if anybody's actually listening to what we're talking about right now, 
don't be that guy and encourage shit like this because it's really bad. Like the, the crowd was chanting, "This is awesome." No. When Nakazawa <laughs> was it Nakazawa that was thrown into the kiddie pool or was it CEO? Uh, Nakazawa. I Nakazawa think. was thrown yeah. into the kiddie pool and the crowd started chanting, "This is awesome." Don't fucking encourage that because it was bad. Don't chant, "This is awesome," because that's the Vince McMahon problem. Is is he'll do <laughs> one thing. And the crowd chants, this is awesome. And he just gets a hard on for it and thinks like, I'm just going to fucking do this shit all the time. It's good shit. <laughs> and don't encourage it. Yeah. Let them know that, no, that shit was garbage. Yeah, it's true. I mean, I, I don't understand why. I, I get it. Like you're when you're there live, you want to have the most. It hits different. You, you want to have as much fun as possible. Right. And c- chanting and having good fun with the crowd around you. That's definitely fun. It's not only applying to wrestling, but it applies to like sports games. So when you gotta take, maybe they're just making the best situation out of garbage. Like that was a garbage match, and they're just like, ah, I put him in the pool. So like, you know, this is awesome. I wouldn't have done it because I just don't give two shits about it. And I don't want them wasting my time like that. Yeah, but I agree. I hope people don't encourage that type of uh, stupidity. So now on to the main show, and it was Christopher Daniels of SCU in a singles match against Shima. And I thought this match was, I mean, Christopher Daniels is, he's just good all around, I think. Yeah. I thought this was a, a really entertaining match. This is definitely what, Christopher Daniels is definitely what they call like a good hand. And it was definitely a great match. I think that these guys are, they're definitely veterans and it shows it. The one thing that, I, that was negative for me is that they kept talking about like, oh, the next fight for the Fallen pay-per-view, Seema's going up against Kenny Omega. And I already knew just when they mentioned it because they had to make a point of it. Yeah. Seema's going to win. Right. I don't want to know who's going to win. I want to be there just wondering like, damn, who's really going to go over here? Yeah. And as soon as they're like, oh, Kenny's going to be his next opponent. I'm like, well, they're going to make him go over because they can't make the guy go in weak. He's got to have momentum. And that something that, that happened on um, one of the other matches, and it was really sad to see that. Yeah, I agree. Um, there's there's things that uh, and just kind of really quick, it's it's going off from Fighter Fest, but it, it does involve AEW. Uh, they keep talking about how they want to separate themselves from WWE, how they want to separate themselves from other wrestling promotions, you know, even WCW and whatnot, but. I've kind of noticed there there are a lot of similarities with AEW and Monday Night War era WCW because Ted Turner and Eric Bischoff were so hellbent on making it a point that they were different from WWF. And I've noticed that whoever's running AEW social media accounts, there's, they're constantly posting articles like, look what we're doing that's different from WWE. Right. It's like, that's fine. We get it, but like just don't go down that route because you're going to make the same mistakes that they did. And we don't fucking want that because we want this to be a a successful alternative for WWE television. And I think by doing something like that, you know, having your commentators throw out there like, Oh, Shima has a match against Kenny Omega. It's going down that route of, of, you know, okay, well you just kind of, like you said, you, Oh fuck. Well now I know Christopher Daniels is going to lose. Yeah. I I get it. It's kind of like planting the seed, but no, that's too much for me. You don't have to mention all that. Yeah. You can just talk about how great these two guys are and who knows who's going to win this match. And they also did it earlier with another match, with the Alley match, and they were like, she's going to face Brandy Rhodes. And then when they mentioned that, I was like, oh, great. So Brandy Rhodes is watching this match. They're making it a point that, like, Allie's going to face her at the next pay-per-view. Allie's going to win. Right. Because they can't make her go again in, like, week, just like Shima. So that was too mentionings that they did it twice too like very close uh from one match to another i was like great i already know who's gonna win this match and the other one too so that sucked i don't know the answer to this question um i haven't looked it up do you know why uh kylie ray was replaced with leva bates because it was supposed to be ali versus kylie ray no, at fighter fest no idea man like i, I said I, I haven't really kept up with the. Uh, a road to Fighter Fest, or in any news articles that I read, it I didn't see anything. So your guess is as good as mine, brother. I think that would have been uh, a better match. Um, but uh, <laughs> anyway, no, it it did pick up. You know, it it started off slow, and it was kind of like, okay, you know, this is kind of not really catching my interest. But it did pick up towards the end of the match, and right. you know that like you know third half, I guess you you would say. But 
Yeah. So besides that, though, the Daniel Tsushima mask was really good. I very much enjoyed it. I just removed me kind of caring about it because I already, I really knew who was gonna win. Right. Did we uh, skip a match or did I miss something mm. on my notes? No, we're on track. I mean, the next match after that was Rio versus Nyla Rose versus okay. Sakazaki. So I forgot to mention um, Ali versus uh, the librarian on my notes. So it was the women's triple threat after that. Uh, that, that I thought that match was really good, man. Women's triple threat was a good match. It, I, I was entertained the whole time. I thought there were a lot of good, there were a lot of good spots. And um, I think everybody was, you know just doing a really good job yeah. showcasing what they can do. Definitely. For me, I felt it was the best match so far that night. Because, I mean, they look so tiny. These Japanese women are so small. And, like, Nyla Rose can easily murder them. Right. But I love the, how they, they put away the, the you're my opponent aspect of it. And they teamed up to face her. And everything in the match just flowed right. Like, they did it right. You have the, the big giant versus a you know, small little person. And I think they performed well in the match to showcase that the difference in them, and it's not just like a squash match. And again, uh, how cool is it that this is the second time that the women wrestlers come in, and it's like, okay, so far this is the best match, because it was like that with Double or Nothing when they had that that women's match. It was like, fuck, dude, this is the best match so far. Definitely. And again, we're coming back into it with Fighter Fest, and it's the same situation where we're like, you just had a match with like Christopher Daniels and. You know, that, Shima, SCU. Yeah, you had all this good shit, and then here come these women, and they're just like fucking killing it. And it just goes to another example of how women's wrestling can be treated the same way the the men's wrestling can be. And Absolutely, it can either be just as good, if not better. Yep. And so far for that night, that was best match for me. Obviously, some other matches did perform great, but I think it was awesome. Right. I, I can't wait to see more from these, these wrestlers. I can't wait till this is on TV on a weekly basis. Uh, super excited. I'm super excited for that. That's going to be um, October, I believe, is when AEW is going to go uh, weekly. I hope so. So after that was the fatal four-way between Jimmy Havoc, Jungle Boy, MJF, and Hangman Page. I just got to say this really quick. One thing I really, really liked about this match is you have a fatal four-way and nobody was fucking napping on the side of the ring. <laughs> you had either three people in the ring at the same time or you had all four people at the same time. So nobody busted a Roman Reigns. No, yeah, nobody pulled a Roman Reigns and went into a fucking coma, you know, <laughs> by the barricade. Um, but no, uh, and even if somebody did take a break, it was like, you know, it was short. Yeah. There was consistent action throughout this match. Yeah, and that, was, that was great, dude, and then... The only thing that I could say negative about it is that, again, because of who we know is facing who later on down the road, yeah. there's no way that I saw Adam Page, uh, Hangman Page, I'm sorry, lose this match. And that kind of takes it away from me. I'm like, okay, this match already it meant nothing. Right. The winner of this match doesn't do anything. They're not building momentum. It's at Page, probably. but It does it, do something. It wasn't necessary. But what it does is it showcases new superstars to people who are unfamiliar because this was a free show. True. So people had absolutely no excuse not to watch this. Yeah. And if you're listening and you didn't watch it, you're you're a fucking asshole. You <laughs> you should have watched this show, you know, if especially if you claim to be a wrestling fan because this was free fucking amazing wrestling. And uh just really quick, how great is MJF as a heel? I'm not gonna lie, like I can't stand that motherfucker when I first saw him. But, dude, like, he's good on the mic. He learns how to talk shit. He reads the crowd. He knows how to react to everything. Right. He acts like a complete shit, and I hate him, and that's great because he's portraying his character and everything just perfectly. Exactly. And one thing that – one thing I like is your AEW crowd, people that are going to the AEW shows and the people that are tuning in, more than likely are, what, anywhere between 25 to 35 years old? Um, somewhere around that age group, but they know that this shit is scripted. They know these are characters, but they still boo this motherfucker. You oh, know yeah. what I mean? It's it's great. I love shit like that. Yeah, I mean, because not only does he talk shit, but you kind of feel like he means it. I know it's a character. Oh, yeah. But you kind of feel like this son of a bitch means it. And it's great because he's like that in interviews. He's like that outside of... 
He stays in character. That is that's awesome, right? You there. know, I love like on B. I, I love it when he shows up and being the elite. Like I think mm-hmm. I showed you the episode, or I had you watch the episode where Joey Ryan was lifting weights, but they're like little two pound <laughs> weights. <laughs> yeah, and he walks in and he just starts really two pound weights, just like. Gives him all of these reasons why he's the biggest piece of shit on earth. Pretty yeah, much, he's a fucking douche, and, and you and you just buy it. So, and I think it's great that AEW has that heel already. Yeah, because I can't, I can't see anybody like that in WWE right now. The closest one is Corbin, but fuck no, just get that shit away from me. Yeah, and MJF and, is is just not what I'm thinking in my head. Like, get this piece of shit off TV. I just want to see his ass get beat, so that's why I do want to see him on TV. I think the so you have differences between your WWE heels and now your AEW heels. And one, he's he's being written really well. His he's really good with acting and taking it on, and like you said, reading the crowd and everything. Compared to your WWE heels, where they're they're just forced and forced and forced, and it's like yep. yeah, they can be good at it, but when I see it. Every single fucking time, I'm yeah. gonna get sick of it. Not gonna lie, like we're watching AEW in a span of a couple of months or a month from show to show so far. So we don't have it every week. Right. So they don't have it as hard as like WWE, where like, okay, every week we gotta come up with something new for this heel to say. And that's the problem with WWE is like we're hearing the same crap, we're seeing the same crap week after week after week. And I get it. It's got to be hard to come up with new shit all the time, but I hope that AEW can prove that MJF isn't just going to be spewing the same garbage every week and I get bored of them. Right. I agree, and I hope that it doesn't go down that road, and I hope it stays the way it's going. And uh, like you're saying that we're getting AEW in spurts and time spans that are spread out. We're not getting it consistently. Yeah, we're not burned out from it. We just right. left wanting more. Exactly. And, and how cool is that, though? That you have a weekly television show, two shows a week, Raw and SmackDown, <laughs> and we're not excited for that at all. Here comes AEW, and their shows are spread out, and it's like, okay, fuck, when's the next one? Yep. You know, like, that's that's when you know you're doing something right. How did you feel about uh, that crazy spot that Jungle Boy did off of the top turnbuckle, or the... the top post where he just did that like crazy ass like flip a and... reverse shooting star or whatever that was to the outside he looked like sonic the fucking hedgehog just like yeah. spinning off of that shit and, like, yeah everybody. It, it was cool i'm not gonna lie i've never seen that before but it was definitely scary because you could tell his foot kind of caught or yeah. hit the turnbuckle or something so i i understand that a lot of these guys are trying to make a name for themselves and they should because they want to get as much audience members as they can to watch this product but I'm legit pretty scared with some of the stuff these guys are doing. I agree. Um, there there were a lot of spots where I, I'm i sure you heard me. We're watching it. I'm just like, <gasps> you know, like yeah. you, you tense up. Definitely. And you've seen them do shit a thousand times. But fuck it. It's live. It's pro wrestling. Like shit. people can <laughs> say all the time, oh, it's fake. But it's like, uh, dude, shit can fucking go wrong at any, uh, yeah. any and, second. And it has. And even if it doesn't, like... I used to think, like, oh, hell yeah, the more crazier shit, the better. Like, I love this stuff. Right. And I never used to care, like, oh, you know, if this guy gets seriously hurt for performing it. I just wanted to see it. But now through the years, I've seen some of those wrestlers that I loved when I was younger, and I see them in their later life, and I see how they can barely walk or they can move and or how right. so many of them are dying young or so injured. It's sad. So now when I see even people like Ricochet, He's not even doing that his, his 630 splash off the top rope anymore as much because he asked Jericho, can I please use your finisher, the code breaker? Yeah. Because it's killing him doing all these crazy moves all the time. I'm glad that he has that self-awareness because I'm not going to lie. It's a beautiful move. It looks great. But yep. every time he does that, it does scare the shit out of me. Yep. Because all it takes is one wrong move and his neck's broken yeah he's either paralyzed for the rest of his life or he's fucking dead and even if it's not that severe like when he lands on somebody's chest cavity that way yeah i'm like fuck broken ribs gotta be or something broken. yeah exactly bruised ribs it's dangerous and i love it i think it looks amazing but it's definitely something i don't want to see these guys do all the time right and that's another thing that i i did like about this show was there wasn't there were high spots and there were flips and shit, but it wasn't as intense as uh, Double or Nothing was. 
And no. I like that they took it a step back. And um, yeah, two reasons. One, safety. I don't want to see any of these men or women get hurt. Two, um, if you have every show where you're just doing crazy shit, you know, it's going to exhaust oh. itself and people are going to stop caring. Definitely. I agree with that 100%. But, um, yeah, it was scary seeing Jungle Boy do that, but it looked pretty cool. I just hope that he either perfects the move better or just... Don't do it, bro. <laughs> yeah, perfect it. Do it once in, once in a while, or just just don't do it because he's a young kid and he's got a lot of talent, and we want to see him keep going. So, next is Cody versus was it Darby or Darby? Darby all in or Dar- all in or however they want Darby to say Allen, it. Yeah, Darby, the dude with the spirit Halloween makeup in the body bag. Yeah. Versus uh, the American Nightmare. Yeah, see, what, Cody. what do you think when you see this guy? Because I've never seen him, obviously, until this Fighter Fest thing. Uh, honestly, this is my first time seeing him. I've never seen him before. I thought he was pretty good. I thought he he, I thought he held his own with Cody. It wasn't like uh, the you know, it wasn't the best match. Let's be honest. No. But but and I thought it was pretty decent. I've never seen him before, and I think he did pretty good. He did some pretty cool flippity moves and everything and that was that was nice i've never seen the guy before i don't understand his persona i i hope they they elaborate on that more later as far as the match not being the best then definitely like it was definitely slower they're trying to build to it and once i kept seeing them refer to the time i was like oh shit this is probably going to be a time limit draw because like yeah you called it cody should go over but then again, you don't want to squash this kid. So I'm like, okay, time right. limit draw is probably what's going to happen, which is is what happened. And um, and that's that goes back to what you were saying, that they're giving away finishes. Yeah. Like, if it's... I understand a lot of the matches, you can just announce, okay, this is a 20-minute time limit or 30-minute time limit, but save it towards the end of the match. Or don't, don't say it at all until, like, the very, very end. Yeah. And then I don't have to go in, like, half the way through the match and, like, oh, they keep announcing the time on this. Great. I already know how this is going to end. You know, make me wonder. That's all I want. I will say, though, that this was probably one of the, the most perfectly timed matches I've ever seen. Definitely. Because... They cut it that to the two, wire. Yeah, that two count was well, the timing, just right there. Yeah, it the was timing right was there. spot on. Yeah. I've I've haven't seen a match timed that perfect in in a really long time. Um, the thing that I'm noticing is that like Cody is a definitely definitely a really good wrestler. Yeah. But he's not the most amazing. And when I was watching this match, I kind of I don't know it was just because I was tired, but I was just kind of like not too into it. I'm like maybe almost a little bit bored. Yeah. But the thing that I that's always been Cody. Cody's never been a, a spectacular wrestler. And the thing with his brother is that the blood. And what they put themselves through in the last pay per view is definitely what made it mo- most memorable. It wasn't, you know, the amount of moves or kind of moves that they well, and did. Well, you were also emotionally invested too. Yeah, and then with this one, it's like the match was whatever to me. It was okay, but definitely with um, Sean Spears coming out and making Ooh, it, yeah, making it with that chair, it made it more dramatic. So again, I'm not memorizing this match, or it's not in my memory of something. I think is great because of the wrestling, but it's just definitely stands out because of what happens afterwards. Yeah. And I feel like this is, I don't know if this is going to be a pattern for Cody because Cody's match with his brother was good, but it wasn't amazing. Right. But because of the circumstance of all the blood and everything, you got so invested in it, it definitely sticks out in your head. And this is going to stick out in your head because of how he got busted open and like it was scary as hell. But I just hope this isn't a trend where his matches are just going to be eh. But then they end crazy, and you still remember. Right. I think um, I'm with you on that, but at the same time, I'm like, eh, you know, because you can have somebody be at the top and not be the best. You know, like Hogan was at the top of the fucking mountain for years. He was just, he was great on the mic, but he wasn't great in the ring. True. You know, same with the Ultimate Warrior. Ultimate Warrior was great on the mic. He wasn't great in the ring. Um for some reason, I wanted to say Psycho Sid, but he was just bad at everything. <laughs> <laughs> no, his power bomb was awesome. I don't care what yeah, you okay, say. Okay, yeah, his power bomb was was great. I think it's because when I said Hogan, I always think back to their match at WrestleMania. I think seven or or something like that for some reason. But um, one thing I like that they're doing is this is a new promotion, but they're building up storylines from past events. Like Cody and Sean Spears used to be tag team partners. Mm. and OVW and um, 
one th- and another thing, uh, everybody's like, oh, you know, why did he do that? Why did he attack Cody? Which was a brutal hit, by the way. We didn't talk about how like brutal that shit was. It was just completely no. unprotected. And- unprotected, which I, I kind of hate because right away because of what happened with this, you're going to have these WWE loyalists and WWE people who work there and be like, see, that's why we don't do that shit. Oh, yeah. People are already saying that. People are already saying, well, AEW is going to fail because they're doing shit like that. The the chair shot was Cody's idea. True. But he obviously didn't plan on getting getting gashed open no, like that. that uh, was just kind of a freak accident. Because yeah. even from what the Bucks were saying, they're basically saying this wasn't a 100% real chair. Like, they set it up to where there could be the least amount of damage taken for Cody. Yeah. And it was just the perfect angle of the backrest to just catch him in the back of the head and slice well everything that because he he just fell like a sack of potatoes man he just dropped and there was that shot where they showed him look up and like drool yeah. came out of drool his came mouth out his eyes are glazed over he looks lost as fuck he looks like he just had a concussion even though they say he didn't yeah i don't even know i believe that but i just do 12 staples yeah i just hope he recovers and yeah. that they don't really do this. I, I don't have to see someone take a full chair shot like this. Right. Because, you know, I used to think, like, oh, you're a pussy for putting your hands up. Like, take it like a man. Because I used to watch ECW all the time. Yeah. But from a logical standpoint, yeah, if you're about to get hit with something, you're going to put your hands up. Yep. You're going to try to protect yourself. And that in itself makes it more believable I think, than just standing there like an idiot and taking a fucking chair shot. Yeah. I think just as... A wrestling fan, you know, you can't call yourself a wrestling fan and, and want shit like that to happen. You know, like, I, I don't, I think I've watched the 98 Royal Rumble match with The Rock and Mankind, like, once as an adult. Because I don't want to see that. You know, The Rock is just fucking hitting him in the head over and over. And uh, his hands are, like, cuffed, you know. So it's just straight chair shots to the head. Yeah. Um, I don't want to see that. Once in a while, if you're willing for shock value, you know, I guess that's okay. But, like, genuinely, yeah, we do care about these these uh, these performers, and we don't want anything to happen to them, no. you know? As much as I love Mick Foley, like, it pains me to see how, how he can barely fucking move from place to place. And then that's just the physical aspect of it. Who knows what's going to happen with his mind from all those chair shots and everything he's doing. Well, look at that. I don't know if you saw it, but uh, that Holy Foley thing or whatever they used to do. Yeah. Um, WWE has this massive warehouse with old shit from back in the day. Yep, the hell in a cell the, that he The ran second into. he saw it, he, he started crying. Yeah. You know, and it's like, and it was legit. And my bitch ass started crying, <laughs> you know, because it's like I've been watching, you know, uh, Mick Foley since... He debuted in, in the WWF when he was, you know, yeah, mankind. Cre- creepy mankind. Yeah. You know, I didn't know anything about him other than that until I watched Beyond the Mat. You know, I was like, oh, this guy's fucking, like, he's insane with this Cactus Jack shit, and, you know, but it's just safety concerns. We don't want to see anything bad happen to these guys, which which we've already talked about. So we'll just go on to the next thing, which is uh, the Elite versus the Lucha Bros and Laredo Kid. This is my first time watching Laredo Kid, and he definitely impressed me. Yeah. Like, I don't sit there and watch AAA wrestling. I don't know anything of what they have over there besides the people that they show in America. And it's not enough for me to go and start watching AAA, but I can definitely see that they have some major talented people over there. And I'm happy that they're able to be showcased over in AEW or Impact or Ring of Honor, wherever. Right. Because they're, they're getting around, even in WWE, you know. Andrade Cien Almas, even though that's not what they call him anymore, uh, he's he's great. It's, they I, just cut it short to, like, Andy now, right? <laughs> it's just going to be A at some a, point. Yeah. But, no, yeah, Laredo Kid definitely impressed me, and it's great to see that the Lucha Libre is being represented quite well, and the elite, Jesus Christ, you know. Their name's the elite for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. They lived up to it, and this match is a crazy spot fest, but... This is why we watch AEW, to right. see these super talented guys do all this crazy shit. And I think Kenny, she's just the best, dude. Like, the V-Trigger, all these moves. It's a, be- his it's a beautiful move. Selling, man. it's it's insane. It's a thing of beauty. And I was, I was great to see this match. Would you agree with me in saying that Kenny Omega is the best wrestler right now? Uh, yeah, I definitely have a hard-on for Kenny Omega. So. Yeah. Kenny's Kenny is special, man. Um, Kenny, 
He's <laughs> Kenny. He's, That's how much I love him. Yeah. I'll pretend I'm a Japanese girl and go, Kenny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that that dude has has so much talent, and I think you know, like you're thanking me for getting you into comic books. I thank you for getting me into Kenny Omega, and I'll, you know, because I was. Um, I remember telling you about like, dude, you got to watch some Ring of Honor. You got to watch some New Japan. Yeah, and uh, you know, because I was just watching. Well, okay, so let's just take a step back and talk about that really quick since we're on it, because um, we're not hitting our our time limit goal anyway. So I stopped watching WWE back in the day when they did the original brand split and the in the re, or draft um whatever you want to call it right and the reason I stopped was because my parents couldn't afford cable so of course everybody I wanted to see was on Monday Night Raw and you had your your B list and C list stars <clears throat> on SmackDown and that was when SmackDown like you know well fucking SmackDown's not as good as it used to be so I stopped watching and I stopped watching right before everybody showed up Randy Orton, John Cena, uh, Brock Lesnar. I stopped watching right before all of those guys showed up. And I started watching again the Monday Night Raw before WrestleMania 29. I remember just thinking like, holy shit, this is so different. I also remember being really disappointed in what they were doing with the women. They had them playing musical chairs. And I was legit pissed because I grew up watching Lita and Victoria and China, you know, and Trish Stratus. So to see these women playing musical fucking chairs, you know, it was ridiculous. And I didn't really branch out or, like, think about anything else. And then I remember telling you, like, oh, yeah, I started watching wrestling. And then you started watching it again. And then you were telling me, like, about New Japan and Ring of Honor and everything. Yeah. And then I gave it, you know, I gave it a shot. And then I started watching Lucha Underground. And, like, now that's all I watch. You know, I, I'm i always watching Impact and, and Ring of Honor now. And, um, you know, I tune into New Japan every once in a while. And it's just, it's just so much... It's just so much better for so many, so many different reasons. Yeah. And um, now that's real good shit, right yeah, there, Vince. Yeah, exactly. Ooh. You little Vinny bitch. Ooh, Ooh shots yeah. fired. But uh, one thing that I that I, and we're gonna go back to to AW right now, and it goes back to something that you said about the the uh, Lucha Libre being showcased. That's one thing I really, really appreciate that AEW is doing. Is not only you know it's it's an American promotion. But your luchadors aren't coming out having a fucking party and they're not, you know, beating pinatas. And, oh, my God. You know, you don't have kabuki warriors and shit. You have legit Japanese wrestlers coming out and fucking shit up. You have uh, Japanese women coming out and fucking shit up. You have yeah. the lucha libres, the luchadors coming out and, and showing everybody what oh. they can do. Yeah, like they're showing off like some amazing high flying. And then even then, like the crazy submissions, the, the Yaba style is what they call it. And. It's great to see all that shit, and I, I'm very grateful for AEW, to AEW for that. I And I really like it. Um, I get excited over them showcasing the Luchadors because aside from WWE, like I used to watch Luchadors with my dad because my dad used to watch wrestling when he lived. Uh, he used to go to wrestling shows back in Mexico. Like He's seen Chavo Guerrero Sr. Yeah. live and in person, which is really cool. So me and my dad, you know, we would watch Luchadors together. So I think it's really cool to see like all of that is being done here on American television and it's not being watered down and it's not being you know, it's not being made a joke, you know. Yeah. They're not doing some lucha lucha uh, some bullshit. Fuck that you lucha know? shit. But loser house party. What's but. actually impressive is that I'm seeing them do these shows different places in the US. Chicago, they had this one and what, Florida was it? The AEW event? This one was in Florida. Yeah. yeah. So you got all these American cities, but even then, like, when these Lucha Bros do their Cerro Miedo, the fucking crowd does it so loud. Yeah. Everyone's into it. It's impressive because you don't see the whole stadium in WWE going Lucha, Lucha. Nope. It's just kids. Because it's presented as a fucking joke. Yeah. But, like, in AEW or the Indies or wherever these guys are at, like... The fans respect <laughs> the it. The fans respect it, and they're not a bunch of Mexicans in that audience. Right. There is a diversity, and there's definitely a lot of white people and a lot of Mexicans and uh, black people and Asians, and everybody's still chanting, everybody's still saying Cero Miedo, which is it's great to see that they're embracing that part of my culture and our culture, and that's fucking awesome. I, yeah. I agree with you, and I love it because it's with we're, we're not going to get into this, but with a, a lot of shit that's going on in the world with like negativity and racism, it's great to see so many different people of different races yep. getting together 
and having respect for a certain culture. Uh, it's I think that's really fucking cool that they're able to do that and embrace it. And um, I mean, Pentagon, I got into him when Lucha Underground. Lucha Underground. For me. Yeah. Um, and that, Phoenix, too. Yeah, yeah. I thought those, the second I saw Pentagon Jr., I was like, wow, this guy is like the fucking shit. Like right away, I watched one match and I was already online looking to buy a t shirt. Yeah. Which I'm a cheap piece of shit <laughs> and I didn't buy one. But, uh, <laughs> sorry, Pentagon. But, yeah, but, I mean, but that, just to show how great they are, like, I haven't been that much into a Mexican wrestler in a long time because even what they did have in WWE, besides Rey Mysterio, they've just mostly present them, presented them as a joke. Yeah. So that's great to see that I can get behind this guy. And uh, to see the elite go up against them again is just amazing. I really enjoyed that match. It was great. Phoenix had this spot where he... He, like, jumped off of the top turnbuckle to the outside of the ring onto, every, you know, onto how they jump into the group of people. Right. That was a, I thought that was a really good spot. And then Nick Jackson, Spike Laredo kid, that looked absolutely brutal. And then it went into Phoenix giving a cutter to Omega, which looked insane. fucking phenomenal. <laughs> it looked insane, yeah. And then you have Nick doing a reverse cutter to Phoenix right after. Yep. Which, um... Looked painful. <laughs> it looked painful, you know, and but it, but it was like you know you know that these guys are safe with each other and everything, so yeah. it looked devastating, you know, and that's what you want. You want it. You want it to look. You want guys like us that know better to sit up and be like, oh shit, which we did. Yeah. You know, so it was just all around a really really good match. Yeah, can't wait to see more from those guys. I agree. Yeah. And then um, I love how they just pretty much said, like, AEW wants nothing to do with this next unsanctioned match. So, they're like, AEW lights are going to go out, and that concludes our card. Yeah. And that was pretty cool, like, because you don't see that in WWE. You don't see that anywhere else. They, so, you know, it's not, we know it's it's all work and everything, but. they tell It's the <laughs> one night of the year when <laughs> WWE gets extreme. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. <laughs> oh, my God. Anyways. That's but, coming up, by the way. Are you excited for Extreme Rules? Shut up. Shut up. I don't want to talk about that shit. Anyways, that was good to see that, like, even though I know it's all work, like, they made it to be as believable as possible to be like, all right, we're done with this card. Yeah. The, whatever you're going to see next, it's not our stuff, but enjoy. Yeah, and I, I love how uh, how JR, you know, JR is just really good at selling stuff, too. You know, like, oh, ladies and gentlemen, you know, he's just kind of, like, unsure about it. You know, he's just really good at selling it. I uh, I was really into this for a lot of reasons because I started watching bits and pieces of what John Moxley was before he went to NXT. That's the thing I didn't ever knew anything about John Moxley except that he was in death matches yeah. or something, and that, that's all I knew. So watching this against Joey Janela was definitely something I looked forward to. Right? Yeah, man. It was it was so good to see him doing his thing again. Um, because I didn't see a lot of Moxley. I caught kind of the end of what he was doing. And then, you know, he went to NXT. And then, of course, they did the whole S.H.I.E.L.D. thing. And I was still on board. You know, yeah, I'm a Dean Ambrose fan. And then when the S.H.I.E.L.D. broke up, it was just like, I don't I don't care about Dean Ambrose. Which yeah. really, it really sucks when you say that about somebody that you genuinely had interest in before. But now that he's doing his own thing again, and he's able to do his own thing and, and do what he wants as John Moxley... You can just tell that he's having a great time, even though he's out there killing himself. For me, AEW or just post WWE, you know, John Moxley, it's great, right? Because I was never sold on him in WWE. I don't even give a because I started watching like just around the time the Shield broke up, so I never got to see how supposedly great he was with oh, the Shield. Wow. But I never cared That's for him. That's why you didn't his, care. <laughs> not only that, I would pay attention to his wrestling. He looked sloppy. Yeah, and I mean. He looked miserable, which now we do know he was miserable. Right. So he probably just showed up and was just like, fuck it. I'm going I'm to try to do my things, and they don't let him. So he's just like, fuck it. I'm just going to collect a check. And that's what I, I always felt about him. I never gave two shits about him. And I, was, I thought it was cool that he was leaving WWE, and it got me a little interested in see what is he going to do now. And just seeing what he's been doing with uh, AW and in New Japan, I'm excited. Uh, yeah, I agree, man. And I, I love that. Well, I don't love this first part is that the matches in WWE, like not only are their promos scripted and everything, but their matches are laid out for them too. Yeah. So that they're they're limited, you know, they can't go out there and show off what they exactly. have in their arsenal. Yeah. 
And then I watch his first match in New Japan, you know, and I'm like, fuck, dude, I forgot. You know, like, oh, my God, like, he's doing submission moves. He's, like, throwing this fucker around. Like, he's brawling. Yeah. You know, he's he just he's wrestling, you know. Yeah, it was so great to see. But we're, uh, we're talking about the AW match. Um, yeah, because Joey Janela. Joey Janela, man, these two guys, I give them all the all the credit and all the props in the world for just going out there. I just want to thank y'all for doing <laughs> what you do to your bodies. Because they, they killed it, dude. They, they really went they out were, there. And yeah, they did. And uh, They gave us something that we haven't seen in a long time. What's that? Hardcore wrestling. Oh, I thought you were going to be like, some good shit. <laughs> it was good shit, though. It was. I very much enjoyed it. And, I mean, I love how they didn't make Joey just look like a little weak bitch. Because the stuff leading up to it, like, you just look at Moxley. You look at Joey next to each other. I'm like, oh, Joey's just going to yeah. get bitched around. But yep. uh, he, put in, he put in his hits. He's getting his ass kicked. And he just looks up and just flips He's him like, off. Fuck you. Yeah, it's like, is that all you got, dude? He's like, like give me. Come on, <laughs> come on, need to face. <laughs> but yeah, um, it was it was good, dude. It, it lasted a lot longer than I thought. Yeah. And there's okay, so there's two things because I'm so used to being let down with <laughs> WWE's. We're talking a lot of shit about WWE. I just realized. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Inside joke, people. You're not a part of that. Yeah, what about um, it? So. I'm so used to being let down with WWE's hardcore matches. They're not even fucking hardcore. No. There's street fights and extreme rules matches. And you always know what it's going to be. A trash can, kendo stick, a chair, maybe a fire extinguisher. That's it. There's definitely um, maybe going to be some food. I don't know. Oh, yeah. Sadly. <laughs> but yeah. So Disappointment. I, I wasn't expecting the match to go as long as it did. And I wasn't expecting there to be as many weapons as there was, you know. You had how many how many tables did they use? Then they had two Jesus tables, Christ. two tables with barbed wire. They had the yeah. chair wrapped in barbed wire. They fucking two sacks of thumbtacks, <laughs> trash cans. Oh my god, dude! Everything. The thumbtacks when he made him atomic drop his feet onto those fucking oh. thumbtacks. I felt that shit. We were all cringing. I felt that shit because I walked outside one time and I stepped on a nail, went straight to my fucking shoe, <laughs> into my heel. So I was like, "Poor Joey, this poor son of a bitch." Yeah, yeah. He uh, he took it like a champ, man. And then I don't. It's I'm sure it's not called the Dirty Deeds anymore. I don't know no, what he's calling they it. They said it. Oh no, shit! I don't recall what it was. I didn't hear. They it. said what it was on New Japan, and I forgot what it's called, but. Um, his, oh. well, they're going to say, Oh, like you fucking remembered. Oh, I, I remember. <laughs> yeah. So they said it too on a W. I I don't remember what it's called, but yeah, that dirty deeds onto those thumbtacks. Yeah. Well, it's like a super dirty deeds or some shit. It looks, it's definitely more vicious than yeah, it was. Yeah. He picks them up in the air and then drops them, which yeah. is crazy. That, you know, and that's cool. I, I like that it's altered, but credit to both of them because not only did, you know, Joey Janela took that move into the tax. You have Moxley landing on his goddamn back yeah. onto the tax, you know, um, and, yeah. then he gets, and, and then just, he gets jumped by Kenny Omega after the oh match, just like more and more punishment. Which is which is great. I honestly didn't even think Kenny was going to come out because I totally forgot that the guy's ass whooped by Moxley in the last pay per view. Right, and he just came out and whooped that fucking ass. Question, answer. Who is the heel in this situation? Your mom. No, Jesus. No, seriously, I don't know. Uh, because you love Kenny. I love Kenny. And you want you want Kenny to do his thing. And now it's like, I'm assuming you're on board with Moxley. No. I know? mean, no, I'm on board with him that I like him. But yeah, I, you know, I, and you obviously I, I'm a fan of Moxley. So it's like. But you don't talk about my Jesus, Kenny. <laughs> Kenny's the man. And uh, Moxley, you fucked up. But Kenny was was kind of acting heelish though in the attack. How that motherfucker's getting revenge? Did you see the look on his face? Yeah, that's you have the to have look, a certain look to that's be. That's a, a heel. look of a man who got fucking jumped and his ass beat and got thrown on some giant chips onto whatever the fuck that was by Mox in the last pay per view. So I don't blame him for coming out and just no. Laying, yeah, I agree with laying you. Laying the ass whooping on him. Layeth the smacketh down. Um, I, I I agree with you. It's just, uh, I feel like there's no heel in this story, which you don't have to have a heel, but people just always Oh, yeah, that's know. Moxley. Moxley's a heel. I don't really see him as a heel, though. He, why did he come out of nowhere and attack him? Because he's, I don't know, man. He's, uh, why did Stone Cold do the shit he did before, you know, before he was officially a heel? Because to me, Stone Cold was never a heel. 
I mean, until until he joined Vince McMahon. Yeah, but that was a good while later. But no, I feel you. Like he didn't just go out and attack Kenny. He attacked Jericho. He attacked the ref. He attacked Kenny. He's making a point. Like I'm fucking back. I'm not some bitch ass Dean Ambrose. I'm John fucking Moxley. Yeah. And I'm gonna take this shit by the balls, which he took most of that to Kenny. And I don't blame Kenny for. But yeah, I think you're right. I'm not really sure who the hell the heel's supposed to be here, but so it's all it's, power to him. It's Moxley and Omega at is it Fight for the Fallen or All Out? I feel like this is gonna be for All Out. I'm not 100 percent sure, but um, I feel like if it was for Fight for the Fallen, they would have told us during somebody's match, so I know who's gonna win. Uh. <laughs> so I feel like it's not Fight for the Fallen. Oh, that was, that was yeah, man. Uh, all, all around, uh, I really enjoyed the show. Oh, and here's another thing that I'm so used to: the bullshit that is WWE. Um, I had to work at 9 p.m. that night. Yeah, and I was stressing. You yeah. know, I'm like, I'm not gonna be able to see this whole show, right? Because I'm so used to WWE pay per views being longer than the fucking Ten Commandments movie. You know, um, yeah, no, they aren't fooling around with a bunch of stupid ass promos. I love the time segments. limits. Yeah, the time limits are cool. I like the fact that they did have a draw. I just didn't like that they emphasized it so much that I'm like, oh, this is gonna be a draw. Yeah, but um, no, it was a great show. I can't wait to see what AEW brings out. Um, some of the matches weren't great, like we said, like the Librarian and Alley. Yeah, and I was kind of let down by some of that stuff. I'm like, this show isn't starting off as like a like as great as you know. Double or nothing, but in all in, in all honesty, but it definitely picked up. In all honesty, that's okay because not everything is going to be a banger. No, but I mean, if it's a free show, that means there's no excuse for you not to watch it if you're a pro wrestling fan. And if you got people who don't even have to pay for your product, you're going to want to put out the best that you can so they come back and do pay for this product. You do make a very very valid point, my friend. I the agree with you on that. Only the other bad thing I could mention, besides all the great wrestling and storytelling, is that that commentator i don't know what i forgot what his name is excalibur excalibur with the fucking mask he's not good he sucks he yeah. fucking sucks he's always like uh uh and uh don't get me wrong we do that shit too but we're not professionals and this right, guy yeah. we're needs, sitting in our living room yeah this guy needs to get his shit together because yeah. jim jim ross is great but even then he's old he's not with the times of a lot of things and sometimes he just doesn't get references of what the pro wrestlers are even doing in the ring yeah and but, he admits it. He's like, yeah. well, I don't understand that. You know, yeah, I don't know what's going on. <laughs> and that's the problem with their production, too. Sometimes they're just left looking at the camera like, um, oh, we're, we're not really sure where we're going with this right now. But uh, yeah, rest assured, uh, it's going to be great or something. I don't know. They need to get that straightened out. They need another commentator or something because I don't like that guy. I think, um, well, I, I'm not, and I know you're not either. The three man booth thing not is another negative. Not That's a fan. definitely a negative. Uh, because we don't like the three the three man booth in uh, WWE. Nope. Don't like it in NXT. Mm-mm. It's not necessary. You know, you just need two really good commentators. Yeah. But you need two really good commentators that have chemistry with each other. Yeah, their stuff's got to be able to flow, and it's not flowing at all with these AEW commentators. That's probably their weakest part right now of their, right. Pro- of their product because you can have two men booth and it still not be good like uh impact yeah impact is a two-man booth but josh matthews is not uh, good i don't want to talk about josh matthews um, it's hot garbage you have ring of honor you have a two-man booth there and they're fucking that great works great you know those guys like each other they work off of each other great and it's just something that AEW needs to get straightened out yeah i think if AEW is really going to Give me what I want, you know. Like if, they, if they're if they're really gonna say, "Hey, we're actually listening to to what you guys are saying," um, I think more people need to be honest and say, "Don't chant. This is awesome. It's stupid. at stupid spots." Yeah. Um, and just be honest and say, "Hey, these are the things that we don't like." Yeah, don't get me wrong. I don't want to be a fun Nazi and tell people like, "This is what you have to like. This is what you can't like." Oh yeah, I'm for no sure. Better than Vince McMahon. But yeah, there's definitely some shit that just really think about it, guys. It's the message you're sending. If you're going to start chanting, this is awesome, for something that's complete garbage, you're going to perceive the wrong message backstage, and you might see more of it. Yeah. And we don't want that because we get enough of that in WWE. Exactly. Exactly. One thing, uh, well, another another positive, we're, we're kind of wrapping it up here, but yeah, yeah, yeah. another positive is I like how they like they had the bikini models up there. It's not PG, <laughs> no. but they had 
like comedy aspects. Yeah, definitely. Which lightened, which made it more lighthearted, you know. True. Like they had, they brought out mannequins wearing wigs, which I thought was, <laughs> I thought that was hilarious. Because Kenny had to know? blow half the budget on, on Street Fighter fucking yeah, and costumes. then and then booking Blink One Eighty Two, and they weren't even <laughs> able to make it. Sons of bitches. Um, okay. Oh yeah, that's another thing. You know, maybe this is just me being picky because I'm an actual Blink and Matt Skiba fan. But when Excalibur was like, oh, I guess Tom DeLonge couldn't make it. Excalibur, dude, you're a fuck. You're supposed to know better. Like Tom hasn't been in the band in like four years, bro. Like, get it together, dude. Or you just don't give a shit like me because I'm not a Blink fan. But, yeah, that reference fell on deaf ears with me. But if you're going to reference things like that, then you should know what the hell you're talking about. So at least people like you who are fans of it cannot sit there and be like, you fucking idiot. (laughs) You already can't do commentary. You can't even get what's going on right. Yeah, but, uh, yeah, Excalibur's not, uh, he's not the best. No. Apart from that, though... Anything else you want to mention about AEW? Because we got to wrap this up. No, man. Um, I think we covered everything that uh, I wanted to discuss. And obviously, you've you've covered everything that you wanted to discuss. So Right on. We are going to close this episode out. And we will talk to you guys next time. Catch you on the flip-flop.